welcome to Metal Health. You know, after a long summer hiatus, I only did like two interviews and uh, I'm ready to get back. And anyone who's watched my channel knows I'm going to be excited about this one because today we're here with Joel Vi Violet or I suck at last names. Let's screw up everyone's no matter what it is, no matter how much I like them too. And um, if uh, Joel is uh, from uh, Thr Throssenblatt and he was in Woods of Ypres. So yes, if you're a fan of me, then you know I'm excited about this. And the cat is climbing my chair. Okay. Hello, Joel, say hello. Hey everybody, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. Is it Rob or Robbie? It is Robbie, yeah. yeah. My, Thanks for having me on, Robbie. Well, thank you for uh, giving me your time. So basically I, uh, I bought a Thross and Blatt patch uh, for my, um, my metal jacket that will be premiered quite soon. Because um, I'm going to be filming a sketch soon with it. Um, nice. the, the sketch, basically the premise is um, I run a metal sewing patch company where I sew the patches on for you. <laughs> and then when um, I give you your final product, I also give you a certificate calling you a poser, a five finger death punch <laughs> CD, and tell you to always promote Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> right? Yeah. And speaking of patches, um, I got some metal health patches. You know, uh, they, they, uh, they're they really good, nice and embroidered. Look at that. There you go. Yes, those if, look great. Uh, if you'd like to uh, get one of these patches, I will put up my email right here, and you can email Metal Health Digital, and um, we'll, we'll suit, figure that out. Yeah, it's probably like six, seven bucks. Joel, you'll get one for cheaper. Where can I send you seven bucks after you send it to me? <laughs> well, well, um, you got to email it and then we'll figure it out. Because I, I honestly, being a recovering drug addict, I don't even, really, ah, that's a cat, the cat. All right, sorry. What's two, come here. Yes, the cat, come on. All right, yeah. Yes, the cat's name is Woods 2, Pursuit of the Sun, Allure of the Earth. It makes sense now, doesn't it? Oh, it's a treat. That's a treat. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's special. I had a cat named Woods before, and this is Woods too. <laughs> a little, a little kitten, <laughs> right? Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. So um, bear with me for a moment while I lock this cat somewhere in the apartment so that it's not bothering us the whole time. Because uh, he will, he will. Look at him. <laughs> Okay, edit. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just having fun up here in Canada. Just like the name of the first Thras and Blatt album. Yes. It looks great on that. That's a great looking wall, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is my, this is my background for uh, my mental health interviews. Um, obviously, I'm a big Megadeth fan, so I've got the, the, uh, the vintage Blacklight poster, and I've got two frames. So whenever I have an interview, I swap them out depending on who I'm interviewing. Nice. That's smart. Like if I didn't have anything, anymore. if I What's didn't that? have anything by you, then I'd, I would have asked you what you want me to put up and send you my Discogs list. And then you'd feel like you customized the background. Oh, hell yeah. You've got everything. Cut. What a great host. Well, doing what I can, you know, <laughs> like it's just trying to, trying to get your time, right? Like, so, so it's not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> um actually next week i'm gonna have to get him to um um to choose the background because i have no bleeding through albums and i'm interviewing the vocalist of bleeding through brandon so i'm pretty excited about that that's awesome yeah and um i hear you're working on a new ep yeah yeah working on uh i've got kind of three different i guess what what analogy to use three different irons in the fire i guess and um i've been having a bit of fun taking some of the songs from Great Brunswick Forest and just kind of, we can use the term, throssenblatize them. So just kind of- Making them more metal, because like they, yeah. they were acoustic, right? So- Yep. So it's basically take, you know, Green Man and just instead of a nice a little acoustic riff, um, picture it being tremolo picked and going, you know, 30 beats per minute faster with blast beats. So, and then where does it go from there? It's kind of the, the fun question to answer. So I've been working you had on that. Me at blast beats. I'm in love. 
That's great. Yep, been been doing that, and um, I've been working on kind of a follow up to the Insula EP too, because that was a, a fun thing to kind of. Well, I mean, <laughs> phrasing is like uh, the pandemic hit, and I was like, well, what do I do, you know, to kind of deal with this? So I I wrote and recorded an EP in a month, and just kind of like used. Um, I was really inspired by Chris Hadfield's YouTube video of um, how to survive in self isolation. Have you seen that one? Uh, no, I haven't. No. So it's like a two or three minute thing where he's just like, hey, I'm an astronaut. I'm, and he doesn't say this, but I'm the greatest, you know, living Canadian you know? <laughs> and uh, I'm an inspiration to the entire country. Um, but he's like, oh, I've got a little bit to, you know, a little bit of experience in self isolation and, and uh, you know, thriving in it. So he kind of gives these three or four different, re different kind of like steps on how to really like tackle like the, the you know the isolation that was at the start of the pandemic how to thrive in that and not let it kind of you know eat you up so i kind of took each one of those um points and turned it into a song and there we have the insula ep um so it's kind of the title insula just means island in latin and so it's kind of like everyone was just all these mini islands um at the start of that so there you go <laughs> yeah um it's, it, he is pretty amazing the fact that he was able to win that lawsuit with rogers I don't. Uh, was that over his like footage from his? No, well, what was that? Um, over? I, I heard that like he had a like Rogers tried to um, tried to bill him for roaming when he was like in space. <laughs> right? So like the bill was like millions of dollars, and then he took. And then like he, he he was like actually it says uh, it doesn't say uh, while on Earth. So <laughs> he's believe me. I lost you there for a second. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I was basically saying like we were laughing at the fact that um like um Rogers tried to bill him so much for roaming and um it, it, yeah, it doesn't say in space or whatever, so he was okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh that's fantastic. I mean that 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 there is a skit is an astronaut like pulling out his cell phone and seeing that he's like, "Oh fuck, roaming." Ah, <laughs> I'm sorry for the Sort of a bad word. <laughs> That's good. I'll, I won't drop any more F-bombs. We're supposed well, to be polite Canadians anyway, so no, well, no cursing, well, right? Well, just because we're saying fuck doesn't make us not polite there, bud. That's that's true. Good, good fucking point there, pal. Appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I've got your signature over here. Really? I've, I've got two of them, actually. Like, one was from that letter that you sent when I bought the, uh, when I bought the, uh, the patch. And like, yeah. the other one was from this. Ooh, I remember that. Yeah, remember that? I remember signing that. In, well, this uh, is number 66. This was like, oh, 66. That's cool. That's yeah. metal. That's right? awesome. And like, so what? You're, you're right there. Yay. It's a pretty good looking signature. Yeah, right? Um, It's uh, it's definitely looks better than whatever uh, Madden that guy is. <laughs> that's a good signature too. That that's that's got class to it. Wh which one's which one's that one? That's probably Shane, I think. Yeah, yeah. I already did an interview with uh, with um, Evan. Yeah, nice. Week. Sweet. But, yeah. Um, that's actually like my my it has my favorite song on it by Woods, which is "You Were the Light." Um, oh, nice. I really don't know what um, Headache Records was thinking with uh, not saying they were good enough or whatever, but we can't talk about that either, I don't think. Probably not. <laughs> oh, man, imagine if there was an interview where I could just say stuff. Man, imagine that. Well, it'd be, it'd be great, um, you know, one day in the future, you know, if, if I'm ever in your province, you're ever in my province, to have a good old beer and just oh, chat. Well, I... I um, you may not know this, Joel, but I'm a recovering drug addict and I, I don't have any mind altering substances, but you can have a beer and I will have a ginger ale and pretend. Well, fantastic. That sounds just as good. I'll have a ginger ale with you. Yeah. Yeah. But I've got over a year and a month clean right now. So um, we're just taking it one day at a time. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you're doing some really cool stuff with this too, like mental health. It's so neat what you're doing. Yeah, I just, I wish I would have started calling it Metal Health Digital right from the start. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to change the name on YouTube because the only thing that pops up is the album from 83 by Quiet Riot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, not the smartest that. naming decision, even though it's, it's a beautiful name and it incorporates a lot of the things I'm into, which is mm -hmm. uh, mental health and um, metal and 
Yeah, I, I do stand up comedy too. So try to try. Oh, to nice. Show. That's cool. I really, I didn't really, I didn't tell you any of that stuff or send you the normal links that I normally send people to. Did I? No. no. <laughs> All right. Uh. That's okay. <laughs> that's all right. And you still said yes. That's even awesome. That's awesome too. All right. Um, yeah. Let's talk about some music stuff. Um, so when you got into, well, let's go back to Woods of Epray and then we'll talk about Frost and Blatt, you know? Yeah. Um, so basically you started doing, you got David Gold to send you drums for this album and then you ended up in, in this album, basically. Right, because you you like you asked for drums here, and then he needed a guitar player, and then you went on tour everywhere. Yeah, you got all the major plot points of the movie. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's up for you to, to fill in the the actual <laughs> actual well, words and stuff. Yeah, sure, I'll put I'll I'll do the word thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think in in early two thousands, um, two thousand four ish, I bought Woods two from Dave through mail order like literally sent him a $20 bill in the mail and got back Woods 2. And um, I think I'd also, after that, I sent him a few demos on just like a you know, burn CD or something like that. And um, he kind of was like, hey, this is awesome. You know, keep sending me demos whenever you want. And then I think 2008 or nine, I sent him one where he was just like, this song, this song is awesome. So like, put, do you want to, and he basically was just like, do you want me to drum for you on an album? And so I was just like, yeah, <laughs> it was like, it was like, um, you know, it was basically, I'd been a fan of, of the band since 2004. And then, you know, getting asked if, if, you know, the main guy behind it wanted to, to drum on my album. It's like, absolutely. This is fantastic. So I, uh, so we did the whole um, album process in, just over you know over email basically dave i sent dave all the demos and he uh he recorded the drums i think a couple weeks before like during the same kind of chunk of time as as the woods four sessions i think so i think it was the same it was the same producer it was uh miguel goche at stereo uh stereo soul um studios in sault Ste. marie so he sent me those drums and then i I rented, not knowing anything about audio recording, I rented, well, I mean, a little bit from my own little demos, but I basically rented a, a, a half stack amp and, uh, and a couple of mics and just like had that thing cranked up to like six out of 10 in my like parents' basement in a, in a neighborhood. And I'm sure all the neighbors were just like, what is going on? And I'm sure my parents were just like, well, I can hear this in, on every floor of the house. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I... Uh, I put a mattress between the amp and the door to like soften a little bit, but <laughs> didn't help. But anyway, so I uh, did all that and sent it all over to Miguel and, and that was Thross and Black One, um, which was super exciting. We released it digitally January 1st, 2010, which is pretty cool. And um, then, yeah, not long after that, they um, Woods needed a new lead guitarist because Brian Bello left the band. Um, and so then Dave asked me if I'd, join the band to uh, to do a tour and so it was like being asked by dave Grohl to join the foo fighters so i was just like yep <laughs> here we go yeah, was, uh, i knew a dream come true for sure yeah it was it was super surreal and it was um it was awesome because because dave was so passionate and enthusiastic and like just infectious with all of his, his energy about music and so he uh yeah he, he did a really neat job of just getting things done like his for the tour, his kind of philosophy was something like, hey, do we have the people available to do this tour right now? And it's like, yes. Okay, then let's do it. <laughs> like, however we do it. Like, let's just like, are people available? Yeah, let's do it. Instead of like, well, I guess we can make it like this or we could try it like that. It's like, no, we have the people, we have the time, let's do it. And so that's kind of how a lot of the wood stuff happened with just that, that, um, enthusiasm passion and just like just like raw just what's that drive, drive. yeah exactly drive. but like, an ability to like execute too which is really really inspiring so um your first tour with woods was um from sault Ste. marie at west was that the one where um the uh the hood went up on the van and smashed the window that was that was my very first uh i joined the band 
uh, basically three days or four, like a week before then. And uh, so our first show, <laughs> yeah, we our first show was supposed to be Thunder Bay on the Friday. And um, the and that's an eight hour drive right to Thunder Bay. Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we had our tour set up so that there'd be like a, you know, a six to eight at max hour drive between each show. So it was Thunder Bay and then it was Winnipeg and then it was Saskatoon. And like, basically those were the days in a row, like each day in a row. So day one, um, yeah, we were, we'd stopped at, I think a national park, like two, there's a little parking lot, like two hours into the journey and switched drivers. And then, um, and we got back up on to the highway and we got up to speed. The hood just went whoosh, and it was, oh my gosh, that was so scary. Evan did a great job of keeping the car on like the road and pull over. And um, then um, we. It was like, you know, that's actually like the most beautiful part of Ontario is from Sault Ste. Marie to Thunder Bay. Cause mm -hmm. like the, the roads are windy. It's like a really miniature BC. Right. So yeah. Uh, that, that would have been scary, especially depending on what what's the terrain, the terrain, um, you know, yeah, what the what it was like on the road yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah the, it was it was luckily in a part of the highway where there was lots of clearance on, on either side. And so we pulled over and, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, at, at the end, at, you know, you know, the, the, the result was that we got to get to Winnipeg to play our show. But at the time it was like, like, is this the tour? Is this it? Um, but the worst thing that we lost apart from the windshield was Dave's beloved little um, package of banana chips, which had been like, uh, you know, like dried, banana. dried bananas, dried bananas. Yeah. They've been open on the dashboard and they're just full of glass. And Dave's just like, well, fuck these then and <laughs> chucked them all out. But uh, if, if it was Nathan explosion, he would have just kept eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Um, so we sat out, it was just outside of um, Wawa, <laughs> almost to Wawa. And so this, this was in 2010. Yeah. And so cell phone reception wasn't the same. I didn't have a smartphone. I had like a flip phone. I think we all did. And there's no reception. So we sat there in the shade in these trees with our van, you know, with a windshield, just like a spider web until um, finally uh, an RCMP officer drove coming from the other way and was like, Hey, you guys need a hand? And it's like, yep. No, but we so, need a uh, windshield. <laughs> yeah, we could use a windshield too if you have one. Um, so the they called the tow truck who drove in from Wawa, which is an hour that way. And uh, so like on the way to the direction we were going, and he towed us back to Suzanne Marie because there's no place to fix it in Wawa. And so we made all these phone calls um, on the way and to like all these different... Um, basically windshield repair shops in St. Marie and, and the surrounding areas. And all of them, since it was Friday afternoon, were just like closed or were just like, sorry, we're full. Sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, we can maybe do it on Monday, uh, maybe Tuesday. Won't have any parts till Wednesday. Like those sorts of answers. And then one of them was just like, we were just, we were just like, guys, like we, we have to be in Winnipeg tomorrow. <laughs> and they're like, man, that's crazy. But like, has the windshield like fallen all the way through? And we're like, what do you mean? Like falling through? He's like, has it like detached from the like actual like rim of the, the windshield? And we're like, well, no, it's just kind of like collapsed a bit. Like it's caved in. He's like, okay, well, after two hours on the highway in a tow truck with all the wind, it's probably not going to fall in. So you guys can drive it. Just don't roll it because it's part of the structural integrity of the roof. <laughs> and so we're just like, <laughs> all right. So Dave went out to the Canadian Tire and got us these safety goggles so that we wouldn't get any glass chips in our eyes. And uh, <laughs> so off we went in uh, in the woods van with the destroyed windshield with like this much this much window to kind of look through and uh, drove overnight from Sault Ste. Marie to Winnipeg and got there at two o'clock in the afternoon. Wow, because that, that's a good 16 hour drive right there. Because um, oh. in May, I, um, uh, I was helping my friend move. That's one of the loopholes about being allowed to leave the province right now or back then, either way. Um, so I was helping my friend move. And with the first day we went to Sault Ste. Marie from Toronto. And then so that's like eight hours and then eight hours to Thunder Bay, then eight hours to Winnipeg. And then uh, the day from Winnipeg, we did 13 hours straight to Calgary, stopping once. Well, other than gas and stuff uh, in uh, Saskatchewan, where we had lunch with Stu Block. 
Hey, nice. Yeah, so that was pretty amazing because uh, he was actually my first interview on mental health. So oh, cool. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's that's an amazing story to be like, hey, you're in the band now, and then <laughs> the shield. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it was. It was, it was crazy, and you know, credit to to Dave and to Evan. Like they were so driven that this tour needed to happen. Um, that there's no there's no no for an answer. It's like, can we drive from Sault Ste. Marie to you know Winnipeg overnight? with a windshield that's caved in and then go to Saskatoon the next day as well. Yes. Okay. We're doing it. <laughs> and then after that, we got the, we uh, drove to Saskatoon the next day and got an appointment um, basically at the speedy and uh, yeah, and got it all fixed up. And then from then on, it was uh, a you know, smooth sailing really. So well, pretty much anything would be smooth sailing from that rocky start, though. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Um, there, there's there's so much I want to talk to you about, but um, I, I I don't know uh, how to say things exactly all the time. But um, so well, let's just move on to some Throsenblatt because I'm, I'm sure I will be uh, seeing you in the same province at some point in time. Because with um, um, Ed the Sox, New Music Nation. Uh, I'm going to do a, a four part mini series about David. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Um, so the first episode was what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the, the same path uh, in E Prey Park for each season, one for each episode. Cool. Right. So winter would be the first one talking about his family and his upbringing, learning drums. And then at the end of it, this would be starting Woods of E Prey. And then um, spring walking the same path while doing the narration and stuff would be um, the first three albums. Summer would be fourth to recording the fifth, the tragedy. And um, then the, the fourth in the fall would be his legacy and uh, everyone who's he's inspired since then. Nice. That's cool. That's a neat, that's a neat sequence. Yeah. I, I, I think I've been thinking about it for a long time as I've mm. been a big fan for a long time. If, if, if that's what yeah. I got to do to give back and, and um and um give to the legacy then that's what i gotta do so yeah that's cool um let's talk about uh some thraws and black um there's only like what what um two albums they're on vinyl right yep yeah there's um 20 canada 2010 and and thraws and black three minutonia yeah because um I, I gotta get i gotta get that minutonia one but um because I only started collecting like three years ago and I've got like just over 250 records. I got to slow down. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's quite a pace. Yeah. Well, because with me being um, uh, a recovering drug addict, I've said this joke before and I'll say it again. Um, I buy vinyl records now instead of drugs. So <laughs> I'm still getting spun, but the good thing is I get to use the same needle over and over and over. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, in, is that in one of your stand-up gigs? That's good. Um, uh, not recorded. Not None of the ones that I've got recorded, like, uh, that are up on YouTube or anything. But, um, mm -hmm. yes, that's that's one of my, that's my favorite joke from 2019. Nice. Yeah. You do a thing like Jerry Seinfeld did where you keep a, a calendar and you write an X on every day that you write a joke? Write a joke? No. My brain is always thinking of random stuff, right? Like, um, with the like brain a stuff. So, um, I'm usually pretty good. Um, my most recent joke um well there's a few but um my my favorite most recent joke is um um i'm not a connoisseur of cheap prostitutes anymore but uh have you ever noticed how you have to go to the same city in uh, the same street in every city to get a cheap hooker you know in <laughs> kingston it's montreal street you know in ottawa it's montreal road and in Montreal, it's Montreal. <laughs> uh, that's that's just a silly one that I that I wrote recently. But um, yeah, and also, um, if there's ever a zombie apocalypse, um, I'm just gonna go hang out with my old meth head buddies because if they get bit, they can't bite me back. <laughs> uh, that one landed. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So I, basically, after the after the prostitute Montreal one didn't didn't land very well, I threw out one that would. <laughs> appreciate I appreciate that. It's, that's just great hosting. It's hosting one on one. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't want to leave you on a well. This guy sucks. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just click leave on my Zoom call. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, whoops, Daisy. Uh, and uh, by the way, don't use this. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I um. Okay. Um. So Frozenblatt, have you done much touring with Frozenblatt? We played one one live show, um, and it was in. Uh, well, it was in Fredericton and it was an acoustic live show, um, which was as part of the Living Roots uh, Folk Festival here. And so um, the guy who runs we talked it, about that in the interview where you were in the woods. So let's 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 move on, because like if you want to hear that, you can just go watch that interview. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Right? So that no, it was a good show. Great. And uh, turned out well. The, the songs were fun, heavy, uh, heavy acoustic. It's good. There's a summary. We can move on now. OK. Um, all right, then um, what, what do you do as a day job? Software development. Okay. My computer, my uh, brother's like a computer programmer guy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not a nerd. I did drugs instead. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm a, I'm, I'm a nerd. Well, it's okay. Um, you probably have better life experiences than me sometimes, so. Well, I well, I got I got a whack of life experiences on the on tour with Woods, and then uh, and then uh, it's like, well, time to time to make some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like I had the fun. Now, now it's time to get a, get a real job, as my dad would say. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because like with Woods, then you've toured um, the states, and you were in Japan. So, right? Oh, I didn't go to Japan. Oh, yeah, not the Japan one. Damn it! I know Dave. Oh, just the states a couple times. Okay. Yeah, we did the the Sault Ste. Marie at West down to basically cut Los Angeles across to Florida up again, the East Coast. Did that. Did that. Was it 30, 30 some shows in 40 days twice? <laughs> that, that's still, that's a lot of fun. That's still a lot yep. of fun. Oh, man. It's incredible. Incredible feat of logistics, really. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> And then, and then you get signed to Headache Records and, you know, you think, wow, this is going to be something really big. And then 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 the two guys leave the band because they're like, yeah, but earache records, they uh they're 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 not that great and they want us to do music videos and stuff. And uh and then it was just you and Dave. I'm I'm like skipping a lot of parts and summarizing things faster than they should be. That's not even a question. Okay. <laughs> um yeah. Um I, I really want to make fun of earache records, but I can't because uh, I'm not allowed. This is tough. Um, we're, we're pretty close on time, though. So uh, is there anything you'd like to promote or share before we get going? Oh, I don't know. Um, what? Um, what's some stuff? Like, uh, well, I mean, just the awesome blots. It's, uh We'll hopefully have an EP out. Um, by the end of the year um yeah it's mostly just like working on that and trying to just trying to get a good lyric concept down because uh yeah the thrust blood albums take they just ferociously eat up ideas and just like concepts and so you know all the good ones well the, i get a bunch of good ones and they go into an album and then like i've used them so it's like okay wanderers done um you know that the whole um joseph campbell Hero of a Thousand Faces, monomyth concept is done there. And then Metathonia, the whole, um, you know, dichotomy between kind of nature and electronic, that sort of thing, that sort of thing. Um, I've done that. Um, of course, you can kind of take little diversions on it and, and new spins on it. But um, yeah, just trying to, it, once a big concept kind of solidifies for me, then it's really easy to do the next album. Um, but uh yeah, just kind of, that's the one, I mean, we were actually, we were ready to go into the out into the studio. Um, I put a down payment at the studio, um, like a week before the panic, the pandemic hit. And so uh, Ray was ready to record her drums and then pandemic. And then, so once the pandemic is over and um, that's, we'll, we'll do an, another full length until then I'll just keep kind of having fun with some, with some EPs and, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah yeah so there's lots of stuff there yeah yeah um vocals are 
pretty tough sometimes. I know when, like, I've done vocals in, like, I was in a band for a split second. We recorded a few songs, so it's nothing to really, like, shine on about or nothing. But um, uh, whenever I hear the music, it's like the music tells me what it's going to say before. Like, it's not like my brain telling me. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. Right. And um, recently I've been working with my friend. I want to start a project called Not Available. And we did one song. It's actually uh, based off of um, this was based off of this. Uh, the, the first twenty dollar bill I made during comedy. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got I made this like 10 years ago, as you can tell, because it's not a plastic twenty dollar bill. Oh, but, that's uh, great. This twenty dollar bill survived my meth addiction. Right. So. Like nice. it's in, in the drug dealer's hands. And then I'm like, oh, hold on to this one. Like, oh, I'll get you a different 20. Like, yeah, right. And I ended up getting it back. But um, uh, basically, whenever I write lyrics, I can't help but rhyme stuff. So basically, the the song that the, the $20 bill song is kind of like, if uh, Everlast did doom metal. <laughs> well, it's almost like they're, they're almost like the, the doom metal of pop, aren't they? Sometimes like that's a that's a really like low voice and, and uh, some cool cool um kind of minor key tunes yeah yeah but um basically in 2017 18 i was in the shower and uh, i got like the rhythm and everything for this for this song and then it's yeah. been stuck in my head for that long right for like two years at least yeah three years and um i, I talked with my friend chris and uh started talking over the phone and then uh, I went over there because we live in different cities. And then for in an hour, we had like um, a, like a rough cut of it, like done. Nice. So does this exist somewhere? Yeah, yeah I, I can send it to you. Yeah, do. It's, it's like way too repetitive at the first part, but like we're, we're going to work on it. And yeah. Um, so, so this is New Doom that you're doing? It's like New Doom. Yeah. Nice. With and the, with you, the U? And, and you. Doom. And then Doom with the U too? With the or, U. or two O's? I was going to go two O's. Like Doom Sweet. Metal, but like... I know. I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna you're gonna shorten new, then you could also shorten doom. But maybe that's just maybe we're taking it too far. I, th- I think like how short do we want to be here, troll? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I think... uh, like all my songs are about recovery and stuff, right? Like, like the beginning of the song is like, um, "Do you know how much drugs have gone through this twenty dollar bill? Enough <laughs> to know my friends who were there for me and my enemies too." And goes on like that. Yeah. Oh man, that's great. Well, I can't wait for New Doom to take off. Well, I- I'm gonna call the project not available. Nice. This is like all during active addiction. I-, I wasn't available. Man, that's some pretty cool stuff. Wow. And some, some deep stuff there too. It's like you've got a great um, humor presentation, but you've got a lot of deep stuff. My, you know, my brain isn't yeah. just laugh, 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 you know? It yeah. comes from a deep, dark pit, and you're only seeing the silver lining. But I'm saying there's some, there's some nuggets, some, some wisdom nuggets that pop out with this, like, bubbly, fun facade. It's just, it's refreshing. Um, uh, are you saying that, like, uh, I'm a facade? <laughs> yep, you're a facade. You're just, you're, just, you're just for looks, and you're just a shell, a shell for a company. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Well, is there a going worse, to, going there to worse? this interview i'm so happy and <laughs> could there be a worse insult than that like um you're just a, a like a person calling a person like a shell like a facade for a comfort like a corporation oh my gosh oh that's gross like what's next you're gonna say that someone else sews on my metal patches for me <laughs> <laughs> oh man so if you if you were a poser making a sketch about posers how would Oh man. I well, first of all, I'd have to change I'd have to change a lot of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Um I, I don't even know. I don't know how I'd do that. Because like I I'd have to change who I am to get into the poser mind. Like I'd have to be an actor yeah. and just like be like a poser for months on end. A month yeah. and months on end. And yeah. um, listen and only um like incorporate poser stuff into my life. And then, um, then maybe I'll be able to understand their life a bit more. Right. So like Daniel Day-Lewis method acting. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, then I would be the last of the poser or, or the uh, there will be blood, poser blood. 
Oh man, this is this is like poser inception. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Implant the idea. Oh well, so, thank you. What, well, right? Oh, what? oh okay. I was gonna, I was gonna cut us off because like it, I I only asked for like twenty minutes, a uh, half an hour, and we're, we're over that. Unless you're okay with still talking. Oh my gosh, this is great. Um, All right, well then we'll just keep going. I just didn't want oh, to take good. up your time. Oh no, this is great. I uh, I've uh, I've allowed it at least till you know another twenty minutes. So if 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 we were to go that crazy. Okay. Okay. So, but uh, I'll try. I'll try not. To, I'll try to keep the crazy down. But no well, problem. I don't. I don't want. I don't want Woods Two to feel too, uh, n- you know, neglected wherever wherever Woods Two is hanging out right now. He's locked in the bathroom. Oh, he's fine then. Yeah, he'll be okay. There's water. <laughs> how did how did your cat learn how to drink from the toilet? It's like, oh, um, there's this one time when. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's already tried already, so yeah. We'll just we'll just encourage him more, I guess. I I don't know. But yeah, so that that cat's Woods too, and I already had a cat named Woods, and um, three more tries, and like maybe a hamster, right? Because like this would be like a hamster, right? Because that's not a full album. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah so I'd have to call, call the call the hamster home. Home, I'm home. Homester. Homester. <laughs> <laughs> because with woods three and four and five you've got you there's got to be potential for some good puns good cat puns in there oh you want to hear good woods puns okay i was thinking you remember um remember those like uh in the 90s where or like uh when at night when they'd be trying to sell you a compilation album from music from the 80s oh yeah 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 i was thinking like for a sketch um uh of a for like a tribute band to woods of epre it would be like in that kind of like format but um it'd be uh woods of capri and they're all wearing capri pants right you'd uh-huh. have all those classic woods of epre songs but like covered to be talking about capri pants like kiss my capri pants goodbye um um a meeting place in time for capri pants <laughs> um 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 sharks of love in my pre-pants pre-pants <laughs> oh man wait maybe that's not love <laughs> <laughs> you know and like for the album cover it would be a tree but with the pre-pants all out and on the branches you know <laughs> so, so where did this how did the Capri? How did the Capri pants get into this? Or is it just this one of those things where like Capri pants are just inevitable when it comes to maybe or like E Prey Capri ah. Pizza Place by my place called Capri, but that has nothing to do with Woods of E Prey. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just it, I just think it, it, I thought of it one day and I rolled with it and just kept on rolling with it. Snowball yep. effect again, and then the next thing in my head. I had this sketch about a tribute band to Woods of Prey where it was about Capri pants. <laughs> well, what would you call the band? What would the band be called? Well, I can't, I guess I can't just go Woods of Capri. Wood, Capri, Capri Prey? Woods of Capri Prey? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But like when they were doing live shows, they, they're like shirtless with Capri pants. That's it. <laughs> oh, man. Shirtless live shows. Oh, boys, well, oh boys. Uh, the last time I saw High on Fire, or they, they were opening up from a sugar. This was like 2016. And like, the, I guess he just broke his leg or something. I don't know. But he was just like, uh, like really high on the meds for the for the leg. And he was just not wearing a shirt. And he was just like, Ugh. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> we played with a band in the, it was an opening band. And they were a black metal I think, duo or trio. And the one of them was wearing like the corpse paint, but it was just like, just like a circle on the face. It wasn't like ears weren't it weren't there, neck wasn't there. It's was just like this very very white, like bright white with just like some like kind of like sad clown painting. So it just didn't <laughs> didn't go well. Like, you know they were wearing a shirt, so I guess that not really a connect uh, really a connected criticism, but it was okay. This is some be- so just some some uh, some live show get ups that don't work i guess is the, is the category we're talking about all right um, and maybe if you want to stick with the capri pants thing again 
like maybe for a music video. Oh, oh, first of all, let's get off this subject because I got a better one for it. Cause I, I remembered okay. something that I wanted to talk about anyways, like for another project I kind of want to do, cause it'd be silly is um, um, a band called um, Meaty Ochre, right? Like meat, E yep. ochre, like the, it's about trees, right? Mm -hmm. And um, um, that way when someone's like, you suck, I'm like, no, we're mediocre. <laughs> built in defense That's yeah perfect. right and like the mascot would be a beaver oh yeah right because he's meaty and it's ochre like oak tree you know yeah and like i can just see i see uh the an album cover or something and it's all these beaver like a family of beavers sitting at the table like trying to eat their steak dinners which is just wood yeah <laughs> right? and um like the like the most important song on the first album would be um, that, that uh, I don't know, like th that old Canadian song, Home of the Beaver. Yeah. Actually, like, there's a song on that one that kind of reminds me of that song, but. Um, oh, really? Which, yeah, uh, yeah. Which, which song is that? I think it's like four or five. I don't remember, but it's just like, it sounds like, like, like how I'd want that song to be a bit. I don't, I, I can't, I don't, I don't even look at the names. I just throw on the record and listen to it. Right. Cause I feel it's like more than just individual songs. That's why I don't like playlists nowadays. Oh, I hate playlists. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I really like, um, like I love vinyls because a side is like a thing. Yeah. Like side, like that's, that's a good chunk of music. It's 20 minutes. And so, yeah. So for whatever, like music that I buy off iTunes or whatever, I'll, conglomerate those mp3s into just like a 20 minute chunk and then i'll have that on my mp3 player so it'll be like side a of um you know of whatever album and then side b and side c and that's how i'll listen to it i won't listen to just individual songs on my mp3 player yeah yeah i've, I've never been a big fan of that even like with uh i never made a mixtape really or like burnt cds where it's different ones you know like i've always been a fan of the whole experience yep right. big time so you just want to say on your last final words, not final, not final words, but like for the interview anyways, you know, um, check out more Thross and Blatt stuff, right? Yep. Check us out on Bandcamp, throssandblatt.bandcamp.com. And we're on Spotify and uh, all the major streaming services. Um, yeah. And so hopefully an EVP by the end of the year. And um, and once, the, once things kind of go back to normal and uh, then – We'll be doing our kind of flagship numbered albums, you know, Thross and Blatt five will be, will be in the works. Beautiful. Um, thank you very much, Joel, for your time. I know I had a blast here. Um, Likewise. Yeah. Thank you for being on Metal Health. Yes. Thanks for having me, Robbie. Appreciate it. This is the perfect analogy for mental health. All right. Boom. I fall. And then like the jogger comes up. Oh, oh, that happened. That happened right in front of me. Do I have to care? Looks around. Looks around. Do I have to care? Oh, there's no one around. Okay, I'll just keep going. <laughs>